<sighs> the moment everybody has been waiting for. Really been showing you guys how to get up on top of Vacant in normal mode. Now, everybody, first things first. I know I make it look very easy. And you could make it look very easy too. But there's a couple steps to this, which I'll be covering in this video. So please enjoy. Step one. Have a submachine gun class or a shotgun class, meaning you could use any submachine gun like the MP5, P90, any shotgun like the W1200 or the M10. And the perks you want to have is RPGs for perk 1, Juggernaut for perk 2, and Extreme Conditioning for perk 3. Sensitivity, don't put it higher than 3. You could do it higher than 3, just much easier if you do it on 3 or lower. Don't do 1 because uh, it's just way too slow. Okay, step two, guys. You guys need to know how to RPG jump. RPG jump is a jump that gets you to a higher distance using an RPG, obviously, that you can't do with a normal jump. For example, from this car right here on this part of the map in Vacant, if you try to do a sprint jump, no matter how good your sprint jump is or whatever, you're never going to get on top of there, unless you're in old school, of course. But we do everything on normal mode because, you know, the OG glitches. But anyways, to do an uh, RPG jump, all you have to do, pull out the RPG, and what you have to do is shoot the RPG just using the shoot button without aiming in. So, very simply, don't let this complicate it. All you have to do is tap the shoot button with the RPG and then sprint jump onto here. That means you have to time it right because if you do it, if you just shoot the RPG and then sprint, you're just going to fall down right here. Now, watch this part carefully. You guys can play it over again, but I sh I'm going to shoot the RPG and then I'm going to sprint jump right when I know the RPG is going to come out. So like this. I'm going to shoot the RPG and sprint jump because I knew it was going to come out. So when I jump, theoretically, the RPG is shooting the floor, which is giving me a boost to get on top of here. I recommend practicing it over and over again until it becomes easy. This one's super easy. You guys could all do it. Step 3. Learning the strafe jump. Very simply guys, what a strafe jump is, it's a jump that makes you go a further distance than a normal sprint jump. For example, when you're on top of this crate, if you try a normal sprint jump, meaning you jump from there and try to land there, you're just never going to make it there. It's not possible. Strafe jump, all you have to do is run, turn, and jump guys. Run, turn, and jump. Just that quick little process, and you have to do it in one sequence, meaning you have to run, turn, and jump. What you're turning towards is the part you're trying to land on. Obviously, uh, in this map, there's just so many parts you can land on this, but let's say I want to land on exactly this part or something, right there. I'm going to look 45 degrees away from it, which is kind of like right here, around there. It doesn't have to be a perfect 45 degree, guys, by the way. But I want to land there, so I'm going to look about 45 degrees away from it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, turn, and jump right towards it. It's literally that simple. There, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube of how to strafe jump. This is a very, very like simple way to do it. If, if you can't seem to understand this, look up one of those tutorials, or I might just make one myself because those are kind of outdated. But the whole point, once again, is to get you to a further distance with a jump, with a strafe jump. It's really that simple. And one thing that does help, by the way, is when you're running and turning, as soon as you jump, remember, after you jump, as you see on the control right here, it says straight right, strafe right and strafe left. So for example, let's say I'm doing a righty strafe. So if I do a righty strafe, meaning I'm going towards my right side and doing a strafe jump to land there, what I do in the air, so at this point in the air, I'm holding the left analog stick towards the left side. Why? Because it's strafing me towards the left side. For example, if you do it on a lefty strafe, you hold the left analog sticks towards the right side, so it's going to make you strafe. It just helps you get a smaller, more, I mean, just a very small fraction more distance. And the whole objective is just to make you jump farther. Oh yeah, guys, by the way, I do recommend practicing the strafe jump. There's a lot of cool strafe spots you can find, and because if you can't do the strafe jump, there's just no way you can get on top of vacant. Very simple guys, don't overcomplicate it. If Just try to always keep track of what you're doing wrong too. So for example, if you're like 
if you're just flying to the left side, that means you're not turning enough to land on the spot you want to jump to. If you're flying towards the right side, you're basically, for example here, you're not turning enough once again. Timing is very important, guys. You don't want to not jump, so make sure you know exactly where you're jumping from, too. Guys, hopefully so far you're keeping up with everything I'm doing here. Very uh, little summary, quick summary is a quick RPG jump, remember by looking down, and then sprint jumping, but not sprint jumping right away. You have to tap the RT button to shoot, or R2. Wait like half a second, so you know that you're going to jump as soon as the RPG is about to come out, then you should land on top of this crane right here. Next, we learn how to do a strafe jump. Once again, very simply, it's just a run, turn, and jump. And holding, for example, left, if you choose to strafe right, like I just did, in the air. Or if you strafe to the left side, you hold the, right, the left analog stick towards the right. So it just maximizes your distance. So an RPG strafe is basically an RPG strafe jump. Same exact concept, like a strafe jump, except now you have the RPG with it. So you're going to fire the RPG, run, turn, and jump. That's all you got to do. So for example, I want to land there. You, obviously you don't need an RPG strafe for this part, but just for the purpose of the example, I'm going to fire the RPG, and as soon as I fire it, I know I have to start moving right away and start sprinting and jumping toward there. So it's going to look something like this. And same exact thing. RPG, just shoot it, and then start doing strafe jump. It's that easy. So sprint, turn, and jump. Sprint, turn, and jump. I will tell you this right now. You are going to fail at this many times. It's just a normal part of learning. It takes a little consistency to knock this part down. But once you start getting it, this will be a walk in the park. So now we know how to RPG jump to get to a higher distance with a normal RPG jump. We know how to strafe jump to get from a distance that we can't reach with a normal sprint jump. And we know the difference between an RPG jump and an RPG strafe. Okay, so the moment you guys have been waiting for to getting on top of vacant. So when you get to this part of the map, jump onto this table. And now we have to apply everything that was basically covered in this video. You jump up to here. Now wait for your jump to reset. Jump resetting basically means, like for example, when you jump, twice in a row. The second jump's not going to be as high as the first jump because your character gets tired and he's a human being. So one way you can reset the jump is just knife or you can just crouch and then get back up. Now to get to this bridge right here, do not hit this thing right here and the way you do that is you sprint jump or better yet you can practice your strafe jump right here and get to this part of the fridge by crouching right before you're at this point in the air. So you're going to sprint, turn, and then jump if you want to do a strafe jump. Avoid this thing right here, then you'll be on top of here. Now to get up here, this, all you have to do is a normal RPG jump. But you have to time it really well, because just look at the distance from here, from the fridge to here. It's kind of higher than that truck that we're practicing on, or, or that car and that crane that we're practicing on. So what you have to also do is you also have to crouch as after you do the RPG jump. Don't do it before because if you crouch before you do the RPG jump, you won't get the maximized height to get up here. So what we do here is we're looking at the target. Remember, normal sprint jump with the RPG, normal RPG jump. We look down. We're going to fire the RPG. Before it gets to the peak of the RPG coming out, we're going to jump. So as soon as you jump, the RPG will come out and you'll get the maximum height to get up there. And remember, you have to crouch. So it should look like... There you have it. Now, if you're not reaching up here, remember, just ask yourself what you're doing wrong. There's only a couple of possible things. One, you're not timing it well, which is what I was really struggling with when I first started doing this. Two is you're probably not crouching. And yeah, that's about it. That's the only two things, timing and not crouching. That's the only reason you won't be able to get up here. If you're getting short and you feel like you're not getting the maximum jump, that just means you're not timing the jump perfectly with the RPG to get the maximum height. So once you get up here, you start making your way through here. Be very careful, do not fall down. And come over here to this part. Now, when you're here, 
what you do, this is called a lineup right here. I'm crouching right now. As you guys can see, my crosshair. I can bring the crosshair back all the way to like around this point right here. Or actually a little bit further back, but this point right here is good enough. Reason I'm doing this is so I have more space to RPG strafe to. If I try to jump from right here, I have really no room to even sprint jump here. So if I go all the way back here, right to the end, with my crosshairs, now I have a comfortable room to RPG strafe and land over there. So from this little distance, you have to RPG strafe. Yes, it looks complicated, it is complicated, but JellyBee knows you'll get it. So I'm going to look at the target and I'm going to look a little bit away from where I want to land, which is like right there. I'm going to look down about like 35 to 45 degrees away. And remember, RPG strafe. You tap the RPG to shoot it, do a strafe jump. That simple. And obviously I know right here there's not a lot of space to run and jump or sprint jump or strafe jump or whatever. So I have to time the RPG so perfectly with my strafe jump that it's going to end up giving me enough room to sprint, turn, and jump while the RPG is flying out. So if you do it right, it should look like that. And then there you go. You're on top of vacant using the vacant RPG strafe. Guys, I would definitely recommend starting off with this RPG strafe and strike. It's very easy to get to and it's way easier than the one in vacant. Because all you have to do is climb the staircase, same thing. Line up your jump by crouching all the way to the end point of wherever you're jumping from. Fire the RPG, sprint, turn and jump. That simple. If you're landing to the right, that means you are not turning enough. If you're landing towards the left, that means you're turning a little bit too much. And if you're not getting the height high enough, that means you're not climbing it well. It's that simple, guys, and trust me, if I could do it, you guys could do it. And remember, the point of an RPG strafe is to get you a height higher, and the point of a strafe jump is to get you a distance further. This is why you can't make this jump with a strafe jump no matter how good it is. This is a pretty good area to practice your strafe jump, guys, if you can't seem to be getting it down. But you can simply get on this part of the map in Pipeline and just strafe jump to right there. Once you start like getting used to this one, and once again, not everyone gets it right away guys. It does take a little time for it to click in. For me, strafe jumping was very complicated at first. I was younger when I did it, but now I understand it. So same thing, run, turn, and jump. That one's very simple. Now when you feel like you've mastered that one, which obviously will take a little bit of time, you can do the strafe jump right here. You get on top of this part right here, which you can do from this car, and then mantle up to here, move a little bit back, then sprint jump to here. You see, even jelly bean fails sometimes. And again. The key is not to get frustrated, guys, because as soon as you start getting frustrated, that's when stuff just goes down the hill. But this is a very good strafe jump practice from here to there right there. It's, once again, same thing. Sprint, turn, and jump. And hold left if you're strafing right in the air. And hold right if you're strafing left in the air. Then you'll land up here. And you'll know your strafe jump is good once you start understanding this part. Same thing for RPG strafe. You can also practice it here even though there's no point. I recommend doing the one in strike, but just the same thing. Guys, I, I hope this video actually does help you out and help you understand a little bit more of how to RPG strafe and get to places on maps like Vacant and stuff. If it did help, please leave a like for Jelly Bean. If it's, if it's complicated or you guys have any questions, please comment below. I will do my best to help you guys out. But this is a, basically a very straightforward tutorial. And I hope it helps you guys. And remember, you won't get it right away. You gotta practice. Not gonna just happen right away. But Deadly Bean believes in all of you, and he knows you can do it. So, other than that, I hope you guys all have a lovely day. And please subscribe. Thank you.